We're here actually in Command Central, and we're here with Sergeant Alan Haskell. Sergeant, Hi, nice to see you great again. to see you. You have a, you've been great. How have you been? So you have a terrific home here now. Oh uh, yes, yeah, we're very happy here. Much, much nicer. A little, little bit better than the old building. A lot nicer. Yes. A lot more advanced. It's terrific. So we're actually in. What room would this be considered? This is the, the dispatch. Uh, anytime that anybody calls you, the Foxboro Police Department or the Foxboro Fire Department, this is where their call comes in whether it be a regular business type call or a 911 call. Everything that time that they would call police or fire, this is where it comes to. Terrific. So we actually kind of started out where the uh, people would end up, which is at the fingerprint. So now we're kind of going backwards, and this is where everything starts. This is where we would get the calls. This is where it kind of everything would originate, correct? Correct. All right, so say I was going to call in and... I uh, either call 911 or I'm calling the business line. And so kind of take me through and take me on a little tour of the room and what we might see here. Okay. Uh, right now we're running two dispatch stations. Uh, Officer Jim Kanata is here on what's primarily the police side. This is Nancy Mosier, and she's a fire dispatcher today. Oh, so we actually, this is kind of a new thing. So we actually have fire and police right in the same room right now, dispatch, correct? Yes, that's correct. And they're both cross-train so that one can do the job of the other depending on the workload. So they can share the workload that comes in here and do the, the job in the most uh, expeditious manner. And efficient as well. They're very efficient. That's terrific. So we're able to kind of see calls come in together and then I know that you were showing me a little bit, for example, if a call comes in from a cell phone, you're actually able to triangulate that call, find out within kind of a more isolated area where that call has come from, correct? That's correct. If we want to just take a look over here at the uh, the 911 system. Sure. This is an enhanced 911 system. Uh, the screen over here will come up and it will show who the caller was and the address. Uh, what it does is it propagates a map of the location that the call came from, which you can see right over here. And a cell phone call with the GPS technology that most people have in their cell phone now it will narrow the location that that cell phone call is by tri triangulating off of cell phone towers and we can get it down most times within 100 to 200 yards of where the cell phone call originated from. And you were telling me before I think that's tied in with Verizon or one of the other cell phone companies, correct? Correct. The, the system is provided by Verizon uh, through the state and it, it works on all any cell phone that has a GPS capability will come up and show a location of where that cell phone is when they made the 911 call. So for example if somebody was in distress and they weren't able to talk but they were able to call the 911 you might be able to narrow down that range and find out kind of in a general area where that person would be? Yes that's exactly correct. Uh, if they were, were lost, they, they're unfamiliar perhaps with the area and they uh, were in a car accident, didn't know exactly where they were, uh, by the GPS system, it would locate, you know, within, like I say, 100 to 200 yards of their location. I love that. So in the past, you know, before technology was this way, if somebody called 911 on a cell phone, you know, and wasn't sure where they were, I mean, you'd have a real tough time being able to find that person. I'm sure that was a big challenge in the past. Right. That's one of the reasons this new system came into effect about two years ago was to, uh, to solve that problem with cell phones. Right. That, that's that's tremendous. And we have this station over here. And who do we have working over here today? This is Officer Jim Canada. And he's uh, doing our morning dispatch. Jim, morning. Great, great to see you working hard over here, I see. And what kind of happens up in this area? Uh, when someone would call into the police department on the business line, he would enter the call information. He'd put in the person's name, the, the information that they give us. And uh, on the screen you see there on the left, and then on the screen that's kind of in the middle there is all the cruisers that are out there and available right now to be dispatched. So by a few keystrokes and a couple of clicks, he can dispatch the cruisers and keep a good permanent record of times that the calls received, the time the officers are dispatched, the time that the officer arrives, and the time the officer clears, as well as maintaining a narrative of uh, whatever the call was. And these are all tied into the laptops in the cruiser, is that correct? That's correct. The, the laptops and the cruisers are seeing identically the same screen that he's seen in his middle box there. So they'll, it will propagate out an address to the cruiser as soon as they're dispatched. 
So if there's any confusion, perhaps, and they, they miss that, you know, want to make sure that they were going to the right address, it's right on their screen when they're sent. So they can double check to make sure they're going to the right place and they can see see everything that he's doing. As you can see, I think he's just brought up a screen there that, sh that will uh, display directions to any street. That's terrific. Now, I also see uh, we have access to the cells and the holding patterns up here on the right. And you're able to control the uh, entry and exits, the egress points. So it's uh, kind of using technology to be able to conserve or what we call green IT, and that's been a very big subset of it. And uh, this is terrific. So in case of an emergency, if there was a fire, you might be able to open up all the doors at one time to allow people to get out of the building or whatever the case. Correct. Right. And it's, it's areas aren't used at night. They're shut down, and uh, they can determine if somebody goes into an area that they're not supposed to after hours. Right. Now being so close to Foxborough Stadium and the Patriots, this kind of streamlines a lot of the work I'm sure and takes some of the workload off of the officers when they bring people in. I know last night you said that it wasn't too busy, uh, we had a, a big game, but I'm sure you guys could probably, you know, it's feast or famine, you'll probably be slow and then all of a sudden be very, very busy on a game day, correct? Right, I mean it goes from, you know, from nothing on a Sunday to a, a full Sunday. Uh, last night we did about 40, 45 custodies. So which is, you know, uh, a big, big jump every day. And we have to be geared up and have the equipment and the technology to handle that type of a, a boost in our workload. Now I see also you're tied in with the weather service up at the top, which is very important. And I think that was uh, weather.gov. How does that help the officers on a daily basis? Well, as you can see right now, they're just following, and we can tell when the weather's going to be changing. Uh, it, it's very crucial, especially in the, the summer months with the thunderstorms and things, because then they can, the fire department can prepare, we can prepare, we know what's coming. Right. So it gives us a good idea of what, what we're looking at in the next uh, you know, half hour, 45 minutes from a constant updated weather service. Tornadoes, hurricanes, hurricanes that type of thing. Thunderstorms, right. And then also we have a very elaborate system uh, where we're able to see the exterior of the building. Um, I love these monitors. I wish I had this many at home as well. But you're able to see, uh, as we're showing right now, we're able to kind of pan around and see the entire building on the outside. This is a, a big enhancement uh, to security as well. These cameras, uh, I think if you can pan over here for just a second, you can see Jim will show you um, some of the zoom capability here that we have of uh, zooming right in on, on people that are, are outside our building. And this would be 140, and this actually uh, goes directly to the stadium, Route 1, so you can see how the traffic patterns might be, if the traffic's picking up, and obviously as a very high traffic uh, 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 traveled area, you're able to maybe see if uh, uh, somebody's trying to get away or what the area uh, might hold, correct? Right. I mean, we've, we've actually picked up accidents and things like that out there and actually had a video of them from, the, from these cameras. So uh, it's you know, both a benefit to us. Right. And now you do a lot of technology. I know uh, as one technological guy to another, I know you kind of handle a lot of the, the things. I know that also Foxborough has a IT department that Mr. Bordelotti takes care of as well, but you do most of the or a lot of the uh, kind of day-to-day uh, uh, -day activities on technology here as well at the station, correct? Right. I maintain the, the computer system and the, all these, uh, these camera systems on a day-to-day -day basis and work closely with Paul and all his people on doing uh, technology upgrades as we need them.